Okay. Um, according to my electronic clocks that are synced with uh, uh, the national clock, wherever it is, somewhere in Colorado, uh, it's now one o'clock. So we're, I'm going to call into uh, session the uh, Monroe County Election Board. Uh, members present are Carolyn Vandewiel. Hi, Carolyn. She is the Democrat representative. Um, and Nicole Brown, who is the clerk of courts and um, our, our uh, extremely knowledgeable ex officio member. So I uh, will start with the first agenda item. Under old business, we had delinquent filings. There were three filings that preceded this primary and three filings that were, uh, or missed filings that uh, were part of this, um, this recent primary. Going to the missed deadlines for annual reports on finances, we had uh, Joseph Blevins, Ryan Malone, Maloney, and Denise Valkyrie. I can report that I've had communication from Joseph Blevins, and I put him in touch with um, uh, with Election Central, uh, and I sent him uh, the contact uh, to get the forms he needs. So he said he will be resolving that issue. Um, the, um, it, it is up to the board to determine how we wanna deal with this. He stated that he changed his address. Uh, and indeed that's true. I got him um, using an online tool that ferrets out information about people. And I found a number of different uh, emails for him. I sent a note to each email. Um, and it also showed a number of different addresses for him. He did respond to one of those emails and that's how we got in contact with him. So Joseph Plevin says he is resolving the situation. Um, this was um, a carryover. He had at least one, if not two, prior notices uh, that probably did not reach him. So uh, could I have a motion from the board on how to act on this? Hal, this is Nicole, and yes. um, I, I am happy to defer to whatever we all agree is best. What I will say is, as I got the copies of the files, um, it was requested that we take some type of action. So I, whatever we decide, I do want it to be very serious. Okay. He did respond to me uh, as soon as he heard that uh, this issue existed. Uh, I got him through an email and I sent the full text of our, our um, call to the meeting and he responded um, as quickly as a human possibly could. So he, he definitely did respond once he got the notice. Um, uh, Carolyn, I can't hear you. Nope, can't hear you. Um, she's enjoying that backyard is what she's yeah. doing. Um, uh, okay, maybe we should present some possibilities to her. <laughs> uh, do you feel that, no? Okay, she's gonna make it work. All right. Um, do we have a I, filing yet for Mr. Blevins? I'm um, sorry, say it again, Chair. I said, do we have a filing yet from Joseph Blevins? I doubt you would. I don't think we do. I doubt you would yet because he just got back to me. Um, actually, I didn't succeed in reaching him until the uh, day before yesterday. So okay. um, that so wouldn't be enough notes, time for a turnaround. Okay, I apologize. The notes that Karen left in the file are that this was due on January 15, yeah. 2020, and yeah. that he appeared at the election board meeting on March 5th. 2020. So we are going on okay. four months since okay. he made so, contact. So we have a record of, of inaction on this is what you're saying. Correct. Okay. In that case, um, I am um, going to ask for a motion from the board. We only have one member on right now. Oh, there she is. She's back and she's unmuted. 
Carolyn, can you hear us? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can okay. hear you now. Uh, I did not hear the rest of the conversation as I left to okay. enter. So what was I there was a, the there was a physical contact, uh, physical communication with him in January and again in March, and nothing resulted from it. So this is strike three. Filing was due January fifteenth, I think. Correct. Yeah. And okay. has he? Do we know if he's had previous violations before this one? I have no record of that. And I, uh, I there's nothing believe... listed as a previous violation. And I don't believe what he's is... run for. Go but... ahead, Carolyn. I said I don't believe that he actually ran before, so this would be his first. And what's indicated in the file is that it is his first. Um, and when the request was made that we take some action with respect to this. Um, I'm presuming it's because he appeared at the EB meeting, told us that he would get it done and that that was on March 5th. And I think, is this the gentleman who did go to Election Central but then didn't return to finish it, I think? And he Correct. To, yes. Okay. I mean, my main issue is here is he was contacted in January. He's done nothing between now and then um, to contact us at all. Am I being heard again? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and, you know, he, he knew he was on notice to get it done. And it's now, what, six months later, and he's still done nothing. Um, so I think that we can't completely ignore this. And that there should be some consequence to it, um, but I don't know that we necessarily need to find him a thousand bucks either. I, I concur with that reasoning. Um, I, I think there there needs to be some uh, material penalty for having promised and and not carried through or made sure that it was carried through by his campaign treasurer. Um, so I would propose that that we do a minimal fine of fifty dollars on this. I'm That's my motion. That. Okay. And I will second that motion. All those and in I would favor. Make that, yes. Wait a minute. I would make yes. that contingent upon him actually doing the filing by the next board meeting. Otherwise, correct. we're going to, you uh, know, correct. Lower the boom. Okay. Um, all those in favor. I vote I aye. We, to, we actually have to call a roll call. Okay. Uh, Carolyn? Aye. Uh, Nicole? Aye. And Hal? Aye. Okay. Um, I will communicate that to him and, um, and we'll see what happens between now and the next meeting. Uh, next person on our list was Ryan Maloney. I was unsuccessful in any attempts to reach Ryan Maloney. Um, he had a number of contacts um, in Las Vegas. Uh, I was unable to get him at any of those. He had a number of emails. I was unable to reach him on any of those. Um, I even had an email for an ex-roommate, and I tried that, but I was unable to to uh, to get him on that. So this is uh, still work have, in progress. I have also left him a couple of messages to say that, um, you know, to call me and he's not responded to that either. So I'm not exactly sure where, what is up with him at the moment, but yeah, um, okay. he's so, been unresponsive. He did agree at the last meeting when we waived his fine to get it done and he hasn't done so. So um, I'm thinking that we have to, uh, again, deal with some consequences, but I'm not sure how we want to handle that one. The notes in um, the file indicate that this was due April 22nd, 2019 at noon. Um, they got paperwork on April 22nd at 112. Um, 
The next filing was due January 15th, 2020 at noon. I have an email address here. Um, I don't know if that's the email to which you're referring. He filed something on March 5th, 2020, um, but the form is missing information. Well, that is that is two different problems then. One is a delinquent form and the other is an incomplete form. Um, there are two different issues there. But he's not, he's not updated his the form that he filed finally. That is my So I am looking at Karen's notes. Um, he agreed. This is the gentleman who agreed to meet with the election supervisor after the meeting. And then he has not been heard from since then. And he She's was called. He understood he was supposed to come back, I think, and finish. Based right. on what Karen shared. I feel like that's the gentleman who drove all the way from out. Of, he came from a significant distance to appear before us at that meeting. And then I have found another note in his file indicating that um, Karen reached out to him on April 8th and left a message. I think he might have been the one that drove up from maybe Evansville. It was a significant distance. Uh, yeah, it was a couple of hours anyway. Um, but so my understanding is then he filed his annual, but it's incomplete. Is that what I'm getting from the notes that you have? That is what I have in the notes. Okay. It says filed paperwork is deficient. So there's two issues. He, he, he filed this paperwork at whatever meeting it was, I think the March meeting, but it's deficient. So the, I'm sorry, perhaps it's just me. I missed part of what Carolyn said. No, Carolyn's uh, connection is is faltering a bit. Yeah. Um, could, could you try just audio and turn off your video, Car Carolyn? Sometimes that helps. It could they just be a bandwidth issue. OK, she's frozen. Yeah. They're yeah, not not getting it. Oh, bless her heart. I could go um, and stop her uh, her video if you'd like. Right. Carolyn, uh, yeah, that that might help. Yeah, Brady, can you cut her video? Yeah, I'm trying to. Okay. Yeah, it's not even letting me do it. It must be some sort of weird connection thing. Okay. Different. Does, um, Does, um okay. There. Are we better Karen. now? Yeah. 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 That's much better. Okay. I'm see whether it works better again. Yes. Yeah, sometimes um, just audio works. Back on there. Your audio is great. I know, but I'm I'm in a different place. So turn the audio, the video back on, and see if it works. It's much easier. Okay. It's it's still just still just audio. There you are. Okay. Okay. So there are two issues here. He was delinquent in his filing. He resolved that, but his filing was deficient. 
which is a different rule. Andy was notified of fine. that. <laughs> yes, um, but but it's a different fine than it would be, and it's a different rule than it would be if it, he hadn't filed at all. Right. So in this case, it's their dollars over 10 days, it's $10 a day. So uh, again, I think we need to assess that fine and he needs to respond to us. But um, I don't know whether his phone is still the same. It goes straight to voicemail. I've left him a couple of voicemails. It sounds like you have too. And it sounds like Karen has. So I'm not sure how we reach him. Um, but I do think at this point that I would make the motion that we assess him the $100 delinquency fine because he's not been responsive to anything. I will second the motion. Okay, could I have a roll call, Carolyn? Aye. Nicole? Aye. And I vote aye. Okay, that is passed. Um, I don't know whether we have a current address, but we could send him a certified letter. That might yeah. work. I don't know. Yeah. I have a number of different addresses. I'll touch base with um, with Nicole and and Karen to see what they have for him. I actually I have what Karen has for him. Uh, I doubt that's that's valid, but um, anymore. But we'll we'll make every attempt to get a hold of him and notify him of this. Okay, um, and that I'll take care of that um, uh, in the next day or two. Uh, Valkyrie, Denise, Denise so, Valkyrie, yes. I've spoken to Denise several times um, and she should have filed her paperwork yesterday, but I don't know that we know that because we don't have anybody from the office here, um, but we've been right. going back and forth all week. She, um, we had trouble getting hold of her the first time, so Actually, the first time I contacted her was the first time she kind of heard about this, even though she should have known anyway. Um, but uh, I was working with her on getting her paperwork done and we talked, or at least we texted back and forth two days mm -hmm. ago. She was supposed to contact Election Central this yesterday to figure out the best way for them to receive her information. And um, that's where I've left it. So she should have filed it yesterday, but I don't know that she has. Okay, that's great. So, so Carolyn, the, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Nicole. I Hi. Think so, I think Sherry's um, actually calling them and checking. I think that's what she's doing too. But uh, prior to Karen going out for bereavement leave, she made sure that I had the files, and I feel confident that either Karen or someone in the office would have let me know if something had changed because they knew that I was going to be bringing the files to the election board meeting. Although if it happened yesterday afternoon, you might still not know. So let's see what Sherry comes up with. Okay. Um, but we have not discussed her case or worked with her until the last month. So um, she's a little bit different situation than the others. Sherry, what did they say? Uh, I check with Laramie. It has not been filed. All right. Um, I will call Denise again and figure out what's going on. Um, I will tell her she has until um, next board meeting to deal with her situation. Um, and if it is not done by then, we will throw the book at her. And the truth is she can't afford it. So she better get her paperwork in. But I'm not sure what her problem is. I mean, from what I understand, she did no work. Um, it should have been a zero and an easy filing. And I'm not sure why it's not filed. But she was going to talk to Election Central yesterday about how to get it in uh, in a timely fashion. And apparently she's not done that. And this was also due in January? Okay. This was done in January, but she was kind of the one that fell through the cracks and never got notified. No. Okay. Even though, again, um, but I'd, I'd kind of like to work with her uh, as we worked with the other people before mm -hmm. we. Sure, just clarifying. Okay. Yeah. 
but this was also an annual filing and it should have been an easy filing to do and i'm not sure why she's finding it so difficult but i'll work with her and and figure that out okay thank you thank you carolyn uh, that but yeah. i think we should give her until the next board meeting and if that's not done uh, at that point we need to deal with it okay so um, for for my notes for Karen, um, it has not been filed as of today. We are granting her an extension to the next election board meeting to get it filed. And we will attempt to work with her at the next meeting or we will impose a sanction at the next meeting. We'll impose a sanction at the next meeting, yep. um, at least a minimum sanction because uh, as I said, I've been working with her for at least three weeks to, to get it in. And she said she would contact Election Central yesterday. That's not been done. I don't know why, um, but I wanna talk to her and ask her why before we deal with it, so. Okay. Um, Very good. Anything else on uh, Denise Falkery's case? Okay. Then, I have nothing. Then that resolves the uh, missed deadlines on the annual basis. Uh, we'll move on to the campaign finance report missed deadlines for the pre-primary. Um, number one on the list is uh, Carl Bohm. And we have Carl with us. Um, Carl communicated to me immediately upon receiving my contact. And uh, uh, Carl, I'll let you speak for yourself. I dropped a copy off yesterday. Um, I know I mailed it or it was in a stack of mail. I lost, like I said, I lost my business and I remember paying my property taxes, looking at my desk and I put that in the mail. It could be behind my desk, it could have gotten there, but I did drop one off yesterday. Like I said, I had no interest in the election at that point. If you read the papers, I didn't respond. I lost my business, four kids e-learning. I just, I didn't take any contributions. I had no interest, but I did send it in. I want to say early May, with, it was sitting with my property taxes and stuff. Okay, um, your, your campaign I, had a zero balance? I never took any money. It, when this all happened, I had good intentions to run and yeah. I lost my business. I've got four kids e-learning. I have a sick family member. I, yeah. I had no yeah. interest and I just sent it in with all zeros. I took no money. It was one of those things, you know, I'm just not a good time for a lot of people. Um, Carl, but did I did, you, I'm sorry. Did you mark it as a final um, report? But no, I didn't. It. I, uh, whatever I filled out the, you know, the original one I got and I, what I said, it's, I'm sure I sent it in or I sent it through the snail mail. I didn't do email. And then I contacted Hal and somebody called me from uh, the clerk's office yesterday and said to drop a copy off or, you know, a new one off. And I did yesterday, um, right before lunchtime. Okay. Uh, I other than would make a suggestion so we don't get into problems next year. I'm if not okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> to go ahead and file an annual for this year, as of the next few weeks, and well, mark it as a final. Well, then you don't. What is have an to annual? Wait. Okay, your annual report, which is due every year, and if you have an open campaign finance account, which you do, because you didn't okay. mark that as a final, um, you are required every year, even if you're not running, to file an annual report in January of the following year. Okay. I'm new but to politics. Can, so I did not know this. But you can file that report at any time. So what I would do is do another one. It's all zeros. You've got no balance, whatever. And there's a box that marks it as says a final report. Drop that back off and we're done. And we won't come back next January and go, hey, where's your annual? Is that the, um, what you're talking about? Is that like the extra pages that was with that report? No, it's the, the report I get for. I downloaded something online that I, Mr. Turner sent me yesterday or the day before that form, but it didn't have those other sheets that the first one had where it asked you who donated and how much is that what you're talking about or? No, no, those are addendums. You just need the front page of the CFA four. There's a little box on there that asks you, is it uh, uh, an amended form or is it a final? It's a little okay. tiny box, but it's more. Okay. So just it's the just same form I dropped off yesterday, just put final exactly. on it and redo it. Put a bunch of Z's in it, or zeros in it and mark it as a final and we'll be done with you. Should you ever run for office again, you can just reopen your campaign okay. account. And, but otherwise, and the one that gets everybody is that they 
whether you do anything or not, whether you're running that year or not, you have to file an annual report every year. Okay. And people think, well, I didn't do anything last year. I don't have to do that. That's where everybody gets into trouble with their annuals. So just take care of it, close your account and reopen it if you ever run again. I never even opened it. I never started an account, like a bank account. Well, no, 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 not a bank account, an account with the office. So when you file, you officially open a campaign Sorry. finance account with the election office. Okay. And that means then you are responsible for all the reports that are acquired by a, a, an active candidate, whether you're running or not. Okay. So just file another annual market final and you're done. Okay. And so just drop that off then this afternoon or tomorrow at the election office or whatever's convenient for you. You have until next January 15th to do it. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I would just do it before you, you forget about it. Sorry about my daughter. <laughs> we like no, daughter. for that. Beautiful and it's lovely to see her. Thank you. Yes. For a future candidate, tell her the clerk is waving at her. <laughs> do you remember Nicole? No. <laughs> Okay. So, okay. am I done? Um, I think you're done. Yeah. Okay. I apologize uh, for any inconvenience too. I'm really sorry. Yeah, yeah. I guess we have to make a motion to waive his oh. fine officially, which I will do. I will make a motion. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Nicole I'll, second. I'll, or, yeah, Nicole seconds. However, she sure wants to write it down. Yeah. Um, Carolyn, um, how do you vote? Okay. Aye. Nicole, and I vote aye. aye. Okay, and Hal votes aye. So um, the fine is waived and uh, this is pending the, the final resolution. Um, you need to close out your account. Okay. Yeah, well Thank actually you. he's done with this year. Yeah, if he doesn't done with this, do but. The, the final will come back to you yeah. next year because you didn't do it, so. Okay. Yep. It Again, I apologize. Sure. I'm sorry yeah. for wasting That's okay. time. It, it's a convoluted process. Yes, it is. All right. Okay. Can I go. Yes, Carl. Thank you. Thank Carl. you. You all stay safe. Okay. You too. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay. There are two other names on the list of pre-primary uh, non-filings, and that is Dominic Thompson and Zachary Weisheit. I was not able to contact either one of them in enough time for them to respond, so um, that will have to be deferred to the next meeting. Um, if you know how to get a hold of them, if anyone on the committee knows how to get a hold of them, um, if they can resolve this before the next meeting, then it will save a lot of grief all the way around. Uh, they're both first offenses. So if they take action to resolve this, then um, there really isn't gonna be any severe repercussion. Al, did you actually, did you call them and they didn't respond or what no. was? No, I okay. did not. I did not. I didn't get uh, time to make a timely call to them. I'll take care of calling them later today and see if we can get that ball rolling. Okay. That'd be terrific. Thank you. you a, a break of things you have to do. Right. Um, are there any other discussions regarding delinquent filings and the review of those? No, my only okay. comment is we seem to be having a lot more delinquencies than we used to. Um, yep. And I just want to remind candidates, this is uh, both a part of your duties and um, it's important that it be done. It's important that other people be able to see those forms in a timely fashion. And um, it's part of the agreement that you make when you run for being a candidate. So- And, and it's required by state law. And it's required by state law, yes. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, hearing no further discussion on delinquent filings, we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is polling sites for the 2020 fall election. Um, I can um, I can tell people that uh, I have been in in um, consultation with Tree and Sherry. Um, representing the clerk's office and the, the uh, uh, election central. Um, and uh, I've also um, uh, had contact with um, representatives uh, from Stonebelt in regard to helping us review sites for ADA compliance. 
and our intent is is to have uh, their um, agreement on any violations of, of ADA or anything that uh, steps out of the ADA boundaries as described in the 2016 ADA election manual. Uh, the 2020 version doesn't exist yet. Uh, so if, if uh, we do find anything that's not in compliance, then we will work as a team with uh, the election board um, and this committee to come up with a resolution. Uh, and the intent of uh, that resolution will be to either come into compliance or make a reasonable accommodation that is agreed with by uh, the representatives from Stonebelt. Now, um, the executive director of Stonebelt told me that they will represent a variety of challenges. Um, some uh, will be visually impaired, some will be um, uh, mobility impaired. Um, we wanna make sure that um, these are all potential voters who are doing the review for us. So that was, uh, they may be a mixture of staff or um, clients at Stonebelt. Um, do I have any comments on that process that anyone would like to make? How many sites are we thinking we're going to open? Yeah, good question. Um, that's I, another another process um, um, that I'm about to kick off. And uh, basically, I'm going to I'd like to do a review of uh, the underperforming precincts to see if there's a potential um, for reducing the number of voting sites in the fall if we do an unencumbered vote. Uh, but the, the caveat there is that nobody can be disenfranchised. Um, if we move or combine precincts, we have to be very sure that we're not going to create a barrier to voting for anyone uh, whose precinct is changed to a new location. And that was the same criteria we tried to meet for the primary where we went from 34 to seven. Um, I know there were people who were inconvenienced there. Um, we did our best to, to mollify that by providing them all an opportunity to vote by mail. Uh, we don't know what the rules are gonna be this fall. Uh, it's probably gonna be August, hopefully, <laughs> or September worst case, when we find out from the state what their rules are gonna be for this election. Um, we, and so we, basically we're gonna prepare best case, worst case scenarios. We, we do know of course that at this point, both the governor and the secretary of state and the election commission are inclined not to do a uh, universal vote by mail for the general. Um, yeah, that right. may change depending on what happens of course with yeah. The virus over the next month or two. So exactly. and I do hope that they will make that decision early enough that we can exactly. not have the problems we had in the primary. But um, getting started now on the worst case scenario is probably a great idea because we'll be ready for whatever they do decide. Yeah. Um, we know that um, this week we had the second highest COVID infection rate in Monroe County that we've had so far uh, on one day. Uh, we had 12 people in one day that uh, were identified as being COVID carriers. We're about to invite 40,000 students to come in and, and play the role of, of infection vectors for us. So uh, we'll have to see what happens there. Um, if the inclusion of 40,000 students does cause a tremendous jump in um, COVID, then um, we'll have to take whatever actions we can take as a county, uh, regardless of what the, the state does within the boundaries that we have. Um, first and above all, we wanna protect the safety of our volunteers and our voters uh, as we did in the primary. And I think everybody on this team did a fantastic job in doing that. I've had nothing but rave results. Uh, from people who participated in voting and people who volunteered, they thought we did an absolutely stellar job of keeping things moving and keeping things safe. Uh, so uh, the only criticism we had 
about the primary election was that on election night, um, rather than work people from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., we allowed our, uh, from 6 a.m. until we finished the last vote, we allowed people to go home at 10 p.m. and come back at 8 a.m. and finish four hours of vote counting. Um, we took criticism for that. Uh, I'm willing to take that beating any time. I think we made the right decision for the right reasons. Because when you push people into the middle of the night, you start to get errors. And also, um, everybody needs their naps. I know I do. Uh, and 10 p.m. was plenty. Um, yes, we have a question from Valerie Houghton Modley. Well, Houghton, for, for these purposes. Oh, um, OK. Thank a, you. As a, as a candidate, well, that's my real name, but as a candidate, I'm Valerie Houghton. And I was just going to say that, personally, I appreciated you know, the fact that you guys cut off at, at 10 and then restarted because I think it does, like you said, it makes it much more efficient. And it wasn't a major hardship for anybody. So I I personally thought it was a good idea to do that. And yeah. So it's uh, it, a good idea in the future. Yeah, it turns out there's a state statute that says once we start counting, we have to count until we're completed. And we weren't aware of that, so. Uh, we won't have that option in the fall. We'll have a third shift. Hopefully, if we can get enough volunteers. Otherwise, Carolyn's volunteered. She will stay all night to count votes. Uh, Absolutely. Right. Good. <laughs> Good. Um, one comment that I would make that will make everybody's life a little easier is that if you do currently qualify to vote by mail, and you're going to do that in the fall, file your application now um because Amen. we'll have those applications ready the ballots will be once the ballots is is set up and you can vote we'll send them out but one of the real problems that we had in the primary was those 12 to 15,000 applications that came in in the last week um we had to work multiple people extra well we basically worked all memorial day weekend um, we had to hire extra people to deal with that. Um, and so if we can get the ones that we know can already do that and wish to do that out of the way, they won't be a complication later in the fall. So if you know that you're going to do it, go ahead and file the application now. Um, it'll be on file and ready to go. Our offices will be able to uh, essentially flatten that curve, as it were. And um, and then for the if they change the rules, we'll have the ones that can do it already out of the way. So think about that. Yeah, good. Um, and there's no guarantee that we will have the same uh, voting criteria established for absentee ballots in the fall. We may go back. Uh, the the direction they seem to be headed is that we'll go back to uh, the the standard. Uh, absentee voting criteria rather than cool. allowing anyone to vote for any reason or no reason whatsoever. Uh, Correct. Remotely. But if you're over 65, yep. you're confined and so forth, you already yep. know that you qualify. So yep. if we can get the ones that actually qualify for those reasons yep. done, then if the rules do change, um, plus there are thousands of things we have to do right before the primary. And if we can keep yeah. our voter registration office from having to file hundreds of applications, we can get it done. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, one of the reasons things went so smoothly, smoothly this uh, spring primary was uh, partially because we had such a huge number of absentee votes and it took the pressure off seven voting sites. It really was the perfect result of a disaster plan. Um, so I appreciate the hard work everyone put in on that. Um, are, are there, sorry. yes, any we comments? Did, we did yeah. get feedback from, um, so far we've gotten feedback from about 36 of the poll workers as well, which are specific to the process they experienced while working on election day, just because I always summarize those and I'm, and I'm happy to send them to the election board. There are some generally quite positive feedback and, and, and some real specific feedback. 
Um, they love the new poll books. Um, they really appreciated um, having a big push for mail voting so that the number of voters was manageable, although it was very busy at the polls. And there are other comments as well. There were also some good ideas shared, specific ideas, which I'm happy to go through, but I could also just wanted to let you know that we are in the process and I'm ready to send what I have so far to the election board so that we can look at those um, challenges, opportunities for the upcoming election. That's great. Uh, thank you for that, Sherry. And I look forward to receiving that as the rest yep. of the board will as well. Um, Sherry, um, we, we know that it was generally well received. What were some of the most severe criticisms we had of the process? Um, briefly, it was actually quite well received, but in terms of criticisms, there was some feedback about supplies. We, you know, we wanted to be disinfecting ink pens for voters. I think there was a severe shortage of ink pens at the polls. And so therefore that process of disinfecting was a challenge. Plus we wanted to be disinfecting poll books every time they're used, yet we didn't have enough disinfectant to supply for all the poll books and to do the voting table. So there was a supplies issue um, commented by many, many, many people. Um, there, they were very appreciative of protection that and these were individuals who agreed to wear a mask or a face shield, but it was still difficult to do that all day long <laughs> and to sure. uh, communicate with workers when we when I had our face mask on. That was a challenge um, for, for voters to understand. And frankly, there were certain points at the poll, although generally it was well laid out and efficient when social distancing was very difficult because of having a central location for our ballots, as opposed to having them spread out, which we kind of knew that going in. Um, uh, so generally, they, in fact, they loved the face shields, how that you provided. But at the end of the day, they wanted everybody to be wearing a mask, a face shield or a mask, voters uh, mask. They wanted everyone to have a mask because frankly, after working with one to 2000 voters, they were still concerned about their own personal safety. They were wishing that they could then be tested to make sure they were okay after uh, working the election. The scanner issue, we know they were hypersensitive. Um, it's new equipment. We, are, we didn't realize that that was an aspect of the current program. So that was a challenge, but those are, those are things that we can adjust. Um, so it was a supplies issue. They were very busy <laughs> uh, because of the number of precincts we had voting. And so um, breaks and all that other stuff were, were a challenge. So that, and then grateful that voters had some mask wishing they all had masks, but it was just kind of a, it's a challenge. So generally positive, but those were the specific feedbacks. Terrific. Terrific. Excellent. Thank you. I'll look forward to, to yeah. seeing that report. I've gotten it written up. So I think okay. we're still getting surveys in, to be honest. I think there's one or two or however many at the office still. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll add those in. Okay. Um, regarding the uh, polling sites for the 2020 fall election, do we have any comments from anyone else online? Um, Hal, this is Nicole, yes. and um, I certainly don't want to step on anything that you have said previously because you and Carolyn may be privy to more information um, than I am if you're in communication with the state party chairs. Uh, clerks have been asked not to step on anything that the Secretary of State might want to announce regarding the general election what the I think the fairest thing that I can say until we are authorized to go further or she makes her own press release would be um, the expectation that we plan for a full fall election. There is a belief that if we have more polling sites and the 28 days of early in-person voting, that that would allow 
for more social distancing because you don't have to wait until the last minute. You can take your time and vote within those 28 days. And so um, right now we have our list of 34 polling sites, some that will need to be reviewed. I also kind of made a first pass at trying to whittle some of those down. Should we need to combine them? It is a difficult thing to do when you look at how many are in, you know, how many voters we have in some precincts, it, some of them are a lot. And if we tried to combine, it would make it a lot, a lot. Um, so I'm not going to step on uh, Secretary Lawson, but just um, until I hear further notice, I, I think the fairest thing to say is we've got a plan for a full out election. And I know seven yep. polling sites are not going to cut it in November. Mm -hmm. For sure. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, for the, sure. The, the workers at Election Day know this, of course. We all know this. Uh, while the primary was very busy, both by mail and in person, we know the fall election will be exponentially busier, uh, that exactly. many more voters. So um, I, I understand why there's hesitancy to cut back anything at this point. Nicole, I will share with you uh, the counts that I put together for Hal and Tree, I can share it with you too, Carolyn, just so that we see how many people are registered and um, how many people voted in 2016 and 2018 in the general uh, in the past. Um, one comment, I, I just got online and looked at the uh, online application for vote by mail and it has been updated. It hadn't at the last election yeah. But it is completely updated with uh, the 2020 general and the reasons that you would select for doing it. Yeah. So um, it's very easy for people to go online and register to vote by mail if they meet one of those sort of criteria to do so. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, again, you know, no matter what, we've always had a problem with everybody doing everything at the last minute. Um, it's it's been a consistent issue for years, and and we understand to some extent why that is. Um, but um, it would be really nice if people would do things early if they can this year. That includes early voting and uh, um, vote by mail if if you qualify and want to do it that way. Okay. Okay. And on my soapbox. No, no, we need you on that soapbox. You have valuable information. Um, okay, do we have any other comments regarding polling sites from anyone on the call? All right, um, then we will close old business and move on to new business. Uh, the only new business I have uh, is in regard to upcoming dates in the next month prior to the next meeting. and. Uh, Usually I call on Karen to do this, but Karen is out uh, due to a family issue. So um, July 6th, we have a deadline by noon for the either of the major parties to file a certificate of selection stating that a vacancy on the general election ballot resulting from a vacancy on the primary election ballot has been filled. Um, we have a deadline by noon on the, the 6th to file a declaration of intent to be a write-in candidate at the general election. We have a deadline by noon on July 6th uh, for the Libertarian Party to certify candidates nominated at a county convention or to certify candidates selected to fill a vacancy following the convention. Uh, July 15th, we have three deadli uh, two deadlines coming up. Uh, by noon on July 15th, uh, any candidate can voluntarily withdraw from the general election ballot. July 15th at noon, um, any independent or, or minor party candidate to can file a consent and petition of nomination after verification of petition signatures. And that is an important issue. Those signatures need to be verified. And I believe the date for that was June 30th. On July 22nd, is the first day that a school board candidate can file a petition and consent for a school board office elected at the general election. Um, 
August 3rd is the deadline by noon for a local public question to be certified to the county election board for placement on the general election ballot. So far, we have no um, public questions that have been brought forward to the board. August 5th is the deadline for the Indiana Election Division or the County Voter Registration Office to complete any voter list maintenance program conducted before the general election. So if we're gonna do any cleanup, we have to have it done by August 5th. And there's a, a process to follow for that. Uh, that's also August 5th, the first day that a write-in candidate for school board candidate may file for a school board office elected at the general election. And on the 6th, of August, we'll have our next meeting at one o'clock. So do we have any other issues or concerns to be brought before the election board at this time? I, I would comment that um, we do have applicate or packets for people who are interested in applying for school board available at Election Central. Is that correct, Nicole? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yep. So if, and, if you're interested in running for school board, you can pick one of those up to take a look. Yep. And I want to thank the B Square Beacon for having put that in their newsletter in their uh, as one of their headline items last week to pass that out to the community. I did not see it in okay, the Herald Times. Yes. Oh, uh, this is Ralph Shaw, and I had a question. Um, just what what are the dates of early in person voting? All right, I'm going to have to look that up for the. Uh... Um, the general election, which is November okay. 3rd. So but uh, I mean, it's not been officially set, although that's um, what we believe the election commission will certify. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so I, I'm just asking, because um, I'm here um, preparing things for the League of Women Voters to send out and we try sure. to tell people the dates when which, which they can sure. expect to do early voting. So I have the dates. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The first they, day a person can may vote an absentee ballot at Election Central is October 6th. Thanks. Uh -huh. And that's also the end of voter registration. Right. Voter registration ends October 5th, which yes, falls on right. Mon Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Just, All right. Okay. You said this. Uh, the first date was the 6th. I, that's correct. October 6th. I have, I'm hearing impaired, so sometimes I miss things like that. Um, and sorry, right. just, just so I hear it, if we did by chance um, consolidate uh, a poll location or two, um, there's a deadline for doing that. 60 and days. That is correct. 60 days before, before, election. before November 3rd. That is correct. Yes. Okay. Yes, but we'll make sure that any direction we're moving um, is is done as early as possible, so we can get as much community input as possible. Yeah, that makes sense. We want to make sure if anyone feels that that their voting rights are being impacted, that we can take action on it. Yeah, I. Okay, just wanted that in my head. All right. Yep. Yep. And I guess, having said that, we also will take anybody who wants to work the elections in. Uh, the general election contact uh, election central and let us know because if we do open all 34 polls we're going to need a lot of people and that was of course a major consideration in the spring uh, in terms of being able to do that so yeah. um, getting those workers on board early would also be really nice yeah yeah I think we're looking forward to a robust election this fall um, so hopefully we'll motivate a lot of volunteers to come in and participate in the process. And I'd really like to see more people come from the university and uh, more uh, people um, who um, are um, in the middle of their working lives. I know it's difficult, but um, if they could give us an evening or two, that would really help as well. And I, I just will add to that. Um, we have brand new equipment um, that the county invested in and the workers who use that equipment at this past election love the new equipment. It's easier, yep. it's efficient. So just throw that in as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not a difficult job. It's a long day though. It yeah. is. 
Are there any other comments? Okay, hearing none, I will call for a motion to adjourn. I will make the motion to adjourn. I'll second. Okay, Hal votes aye. Carolyn votes aye. Nicole votes aye. The meeting is adjourned. See you next month. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody.